Okay, so welcome to the presentation of the Kerbalar Impulse, uh, a Kerbal space program look-alike of the Solar Impulse solar aircraft. So first of all, uh, I have to present the actual aircraft, which you can see here in that image. Uh, so first of all, you can see that yeah, it is relatively large, but uh, the cockpit seems a little bit uh, small, and it is. Uh, the pilot has not a lot of room. He can <laughs> lie down, but because the back of the chair can be folded, but it's pretty limited. It, it is the only thing he can do basically. So yeah, considering the time it. Uh, can fly, it's really problematic and it is a human challenge. So, yeah. it is the first thing to consider. And to have even that really small cockpit, you still need large wings and 17,000 uh, solid cells. And also, in that picture, you can see the four engines, and inside the engines nacelles here are the four batteries batteries which are used at night to uh, keep the aircraft flying. And uh, it's pretty standard, uh, s very slow but high, effi high efficiency of aircraft with a straight large wingspan wing. And uh, I think the wingspan is comparable to a Boeing 747, so it's really not that small for an aircraft that is only 2.5 tons, around 2.5 tons, I think. So yeah, pretty impressive feat is that it can fly night and day, but we, we will talk about it a little bit later. So what is the goal with this airplane? Well, it is to uh, go around the world trip in several um, several stages several legs if you want. So here is the complete uh, around the world flight. And while I am recording this, uh, they have just finished their worldwide trip. They have uh, arrived in uh, Abu Dhabi after crossing Europe. So they had to stop in Hawaii, that usually it took, should have taken about six months, but it will take uh, six months plus one year. Why? Because they had to stop, they had a problem with batteries and they have to rep they had to repair the batteries in Hawaii, but problems with that is that it took so long they had uh, to wait for another uh, good uh, weather window and it is it means waiting for another year. So it could be summer again in Hawaii. Fortunately, or at least string, fortunately they could wait, uh, they have f sufficient funding to do that and uh, they were capable to continue to the United States and uh, and then they could fly across the Atlantic and finish the trip. So now that we have seen the, the goal, let's go to the typical flight pattern because this is uh, an important part of the challenge. So. The thing is that the, this aircraft does not use fuel. In the day, it receives power from the sun, so it can climb also uh, high, so it does not have problems with um, uh, low altitude clouds and can be more effective. And if it has these good conditions, it can charge the batteries for all days. And here you can see in green, the battery charge increases, and uh, in blue, the altitude also increases during the day. And then during the night, first it does not use batteries and uh, the batteries are full, it glides a little bit and uses energy solar, uh, the energy of the sun to fly. But then to avoid losing too much energy, they also use the batteries, uh, energy I should say altitude, so they use batteries to avoid losing too much altitude. But in the, uh, in the end of the night, at the end of the night, they can uh, start to recharge the batteries without uh, dropping to the ground. So this is good, because this means the solar aircraft can fly night and day, even though, even though it's a solar aircraft. So that's pretty impressive and it requires uh, a lot of uh, engineering mastery to, to achieve that. 
this was uh, also um, a typical flight where they neglected the landscape or you can say it represents a flight above the ocean where the landscape is always at zero of course if you have a large mountain you have to time it so you can fly over so yeah so before i present the uh, Kerbal Space Program version of the aircraft, I would like to uh, just make a parenthesis of critical thinking, because even though I'm a fan of the project, critical thinking is uh, always important, it's always important to think by yourself and not be gullible. So yeah, I have uh, you overall a good opinion of the project, of course, but there are two problems I have with the communication. Uh, especially on their website. And the first one is that uh, they put forward the word uh, cleanliness, uh, the expression future is clean, and I don't think it's really um, the best thing to do because the real problem with uh, the main problem with uh, non renewable energies with fossil fuels is that they create a global warming and uh, CO2 is the agent of global warming and it's not really the, the fact that it is um, unclean that is a problem. It is not really toxic. Of course it can, uh, CO2 can uh, cause suffocation but it's not directly toxic, it's like nitrogen. So the real problem is that with CO2 you basically increase the global warming by the greenhouse effect so I, I don't like the word perhaps I'm a little bit too uh, picky but I, I think the, the worst problem is global warming not the fact that uh, uh, fossil fuels are really unclean especially since uh, we have made progress on that front also the second problem is that uh, Solar Impulse is a really good project, but it is not going, in the short term at least, going to reduce the, or solve the problem of mass transportation via aircraft. Why? Because we just need to see an image of the aircraft, and all this very large wingspan aircraft is going to be used for one pilot to travel in. So yeah, the problem is pretty obvious, but hey, since this is KSP, I decided to do a small illustration with the rover. That's what we are going to see. So here we are with Valentina, and she will help me illustrate the challenges of solar-powered transportation. So why did I choose a rover? Well, it's because the case of cars is uh, the most common one, it's very interesting, so I decided to present a rover. And also, uh, the mileage for a passenger between an airliner and a car is very similar, and a small car. So it's really um, the same order of magnitude, at least if you have uh, one passenger in the car. So I, I thought it was really interesting to to go for uh, that example. So first of all, let's get Valentina inside the rover, if I can. So she's a little too close, yes, oh yes, go. Jump, no, too close. Jump here, no, little closer here, yes, grab, and uh, Climb out, yes, and now board. So, what this rover is meant to illustrate is the size of the solar panel one needs for the average individual American car in a state where there is a lot of sun available, like for example New Mexico. So. Here is the size of the panel needed for the average car. Now, it seems like uh, it's not that much, but the problem is that uh, this is actually not the size of a small car. This is the size of the pickup of a pickup. So, if we look uh, 
compared to the size of Valentina, this is a, a large pickup. So it is a large pickup, but with the power of the standard American uh, individual car. So it is a very uh, underpowered pickup, in my opinion. And this is not sadly the only problem. So, uh, there is, for example, perhaps the most serious one is uh, the fact that we need batteries and a lot of them so if we n you need a lot of batteries to keep all the power you get from the sun well you will have a more heavy an heavier vehicle and this means that uh, the performance are even slow um, worse for example if you talk about accelerations and um, also the going uphill so the performance are going uh, further down uh, perhaps also the a challenge of the same level is that yes this is what you need if you have a perfect exposition to the sun but you don't the orientation of the panels is not uh, we can drive around a bit but the orientation of the panels is not optimal and uh, suppose that you have to park your car uh, at work under a tree, well, we have a problem because in the statistics I used, the shadow of the, of the trees and buildings are not taken into account. This means that to have decent performance, uh, you, you will have an even larger panel. S what uh, I want to illustrate here is that yes, it, it is possible because for we, we in, in a way we are lucky. It is not that we need 100 uh, times this surface here. It's reasonable. Reasonable, sorry. It is possible to achieve uh, individual individual transportation with the sun, but it's not really convenient. It is. It will be difficult. So it is important to see that we have a lot of work to do until we are capable of replacing uh, the, the standard car with a solar car that uh, is uh, this of a decent size and not the size of a pickup uh, with even uh, heavier batteries than uh, we can see here perhaps and uh, problems with uh, where you park the car. Also, I forgot to mention, but this is the best scenario uh, from the geographical point of view, because New Mexico um, is a state where there is a lot of sun available. It's almost a desert. If you want to do the same in northern Europe or even northern United States, you will need a larger panel. So, another important thing to keep in mind, but the conclusion doesn't change. I think it is possible to uh, obtain uh, individual transportation by means of solar panel or at least renewable energies only but it will be a huge challenge and uh, um, even though solar impulse goes into the right direction I don't think it is uh, currently possible in the short term. Or at least, uh, in uh, I, how to say this, I don't think that uh, solar impulse is the direct answer to the problem. So, after this criticism, I also want to uh, point out uh, two things the uh, SI uh, solar impulse team said, which were really good in my opinion two really good points they made. The first one is that um, having an aircraft that it cap is capable of uh, flying without fuel is a huge advantage. So uh, first of all it does not pollute and uh, even if CO2 is not toxic it uh, in enhances the um, greenhouse effect around Earth and uh, creates climate change and it is really important to cut down as fast as we can the emissions of CO2 and if you don't burn fuel don't burn fuel, you don't emit CO2 and uh, especially for robots also no fuel need is a big advantage um, the best example I think is uh, um, 
probe opportunity on Mars, which is a rover. And since NASA was capable of creating a really, um, how to say, a resilient design, it is still, uh, after 12 years, 12 years, rowing on Mars. Because you d once you don't need fuel, you just need sunlight. And the only other uh, alternative, as people will know by k playing KSP, is the plutonium um, electrical um, radioisotopic generator, but yeah, probably not uh, the most ecological thing either. So solar panels are they're really effective, really good. And the second uh, uh, point I liked from the SIT is that we have only a limited amount of cheap oil that we can use and plastic is based on the refining of cheap oil at least cheap plastics so why, why <coughs> sorry what are we going to do when we run out of cheap oil so it is really g a good idea not to burn oil but to, to convert it into plastics i knew that uh, the oil was the um, um, prime material for plastics, but I didn't think about that point, and uh, I think Bertrand Picard said this point, which was a great reminder for me. So I appreciate it, and I wanted to give credit to the SI teams for these two points. So now let's compare the carbolar impulse to the real solar impulse. Okay, so I hope that it looks uh, decently similar. For me it's uh, sort of okay. I will not pretend that this is a replica, of course, because I think uh, to have similar performance, to have decent uh, frame rate and uh, speed of computation on my computer would be a little too hard with a perfect replica, so yeah, it is uh, something that looks apart, I would say. So, here we can see, first of all, the four um, uh, electric propeller engines, and I really like how they are modeled in uh, Kerbal aircraft expansion in the uh, Kerbal aircraft expansion mode, KEX, because um, I think they were uh, based on the engines of Solar Impulse. It is uh, not possible that it is a coincidence they look so close to what Solar Impulse has as a power plant, so yeah. I really like these, really similar, they look really good. Then we have the wings, large wings with uh, solar panels. I could not place uh, solar panels everywhere, like on the tail of the tail boom or on the wing. I couldn't because I was I couldn't because I was limited by the part count, and uh, this is more than enough to generate the energy to uh, propel the aircraft and also charge batteries. So we don't have uh, solar panels here, but just to look the part a little bit more, I decided to put some on the tail. Regarding the gear, we see that it is uh, similar. It has not a real gear except for the main central one. Here is the cockpit. I tried to emulate also the view from the cockpit by putting that fuselage here. And to uh, help with the launch, we have these launch clamps that are required because we don't have a uh, functional ground crew for this aircraft. Did I miss something? Yeah, of course the struts are not here on the real plane. But yeah, for me it's close enough. <laughs> 